Syncline C5 is Polygon's contribution to the world of carbon fiber cross-country hardtails. At an MSRP of $2,299, it has a pretty solid spec for the cost relative to its competitors, but price isn't everything. Is the Syncline any good? In this video, we're going to see how the bike performed over the course of a month of riding. I'm not an XC racer, but I've decided to give it my best efforts on the racing circuit. I'm going to document my efforts as I try to move up the rankings. So if you want to see if I can go from zero to hero, or fail miserably, make sure to subscribe, hit that bell icon, and the thumbs up. The Sync Line will be my race bike for the season, and racing will provide the ultimate test. If you want to learn more about the bike, I'll leave a link to that video at the end of this one. I've replaced the heavy stock wire bead WTB Trail Boss tires with a lighter combo of Trail Boss and Vigilante set up tubeless. Same brand, but a better casing and compound. This combo shaves two pounds off the weight of the bike. I'll get more into that later in the video. I'll leave links to the tires and the bike in the description. For now, let's see if this bike is going to be a worthy race bike. Carbon fiber is the go-to material for most, if not all, of the fastest race bikes out there. The beauty of carbon fiber is that engineers can better fine-tune a frame's design to have certain characteristics. Like for example, reducing the tendency of the frame to twist under heavy loads. This is called lateral stiffness. The sync line has plenty of it, and you can feel its effect when accelerating. Now that stiffness does come at a cost when pedaling across chattery sections of trail. However, the switch to tubeless and the right tires will help relieve a lot of that. But that same stiffness also helps the bike handle well in every other situation I encountered. Rough section of trails downhill were no problem. The bike floats over the rough stuff and tracks well holding its line, requiring little, if any, corrective movements. If the frame is the heart of the hardtail, the fork is certainly the brain. Polygon spec a good option in the Fox 32 Rhythm Fork. The 120 millimeters of travel is plenty, if not overkill, for some courses. The fork soaked up small bumps and felt generally supportive. The grip damper works really well, and changes to the low-speed compression are pretty noticeable. The fork has a very progressive feel. For those unfamiliar, it means that the fork gets more firm the deeper it gets into the travel. This is to prevent the fork from bottoming out easily and it's simply the nature of all air forks. One thing I'd like to do is I'd like to tweak it a little more to make it feel more compliant when I'm riding on slower, rocky tech trails. But in most situations, that progressiveness is going to be a great benefit. Another thing I'd like to do with this fork is to set it up with a remote lockout for those climbs. Gear shifting is courtesy of the ever-reliable Shimano SLX group set. It's not the lightest group set out there, but it's a workhorse of a drivetrain that's spec on a lot of higher-end trail and enduro bikes. Oh, wow. It sits just below the premium XT and XTR group sets. This group set shifts smoothly, and there is way more range than I need here in the Midwest. I've spent most of my riding using the smaller gears on the cassette. I rarely needed to shift higher than halfway up the cassette, and I attribute that in part to the lightweight of the bike, the terrain, and in part my improved fitness. In places where there are extended long climbs, the wide range of the cassette will come in handy. I've had a lot of experience with this group set over the years and it's never let me down. I had low expectations from the alloy wheel set, but I was pleasantly surprised. The Shimano hubs are a nice touch with the rapid engagement rear hub. That rapid engagement gives near immediate power from your legs to the ground. The benefit is very noticeable on a hard Woo. If you're a skeptic about high engagement hubs, just take one out on technical terrain. XC bikes are where high engagement hubs really shine. The cockpit for this size medium 29er seems to fit my 5 foot 9 inch frame reasonably well. I felt very centered in the bike. Despite not having a dropper, I felt very much in control. 
Polygon leaves you with a lot of spacers to adjust the stem height up or down, and I'll be experimenting with different heights to find the ideal setup. The Shimano MT410 brakes have plenty of initial bite, which works well on the rolling terrain I'm riding. The two finger lever is easy to use with one finger, and modulation is good as far as Shimano brakes go. If you're running this brake down longer high speed descents, you'll want to consider swapping to metallic brake pads. That change, however, will require you to change out the brake rotors, as this bike comes with the infamous Shimano resin only pads rotors. In most cases, however, a rider looking to bump down big descents is not going to be doing it on an XC bike. So the Shimano brakes will be fine for most XC riding. So how does this part spec handle overall? Over the course of the month, I ran this bike through a handful of different trails ranging from flowy hardpack, the sandy rutted single track, slow rocky tech. My favorite thing about this bike is the very quick transfer of power to the trail when pedaling. The stiffness of that carbon frame leaves little in the way of wasted energy. And it's what you want in a race frame. The lateral stiffness also translates into precision. The bike cuts like a scalpel through tight sections of trail, and it accelerates well out of corners. I can't think of a bike that handles as nice as this one, to be honest. The bike eases into corners beautifully and holds its line. In slower tech, the bike's precision is noticeable, and the bike holds its line without much need for corrective movements. The extra hub engagement is awesome when ratcheting through tight technical sections. In rough rutted sandy conditions, the bike again tracked well. It does suffer from the same shortcomings as any hardtail when trying to pedal through flat or uphill routes or rocks. Line choice and technique and the right tire pressure are important factors to consider. The geometry is modern XC. The 67 degree head angle feels great on steep inclines as well as steep downhills. The bike has great stability at higher speeds which I attribute to the 435 mm chainstay and that slacker head angle. The lack of a dropper post posed no problems at all. I was expecting to reach for the missing dropper lever and I haven't, not once. I have to admit I am very impressed with the sink line and I am always happy to get on it and ride it. Maybe it's because I'm consistently faster on it and less tired after every ride. So far I've managed to beat personal records on multiple trails for every ride I've done. The most noticeable improvement was on this segment at my home trails called Cemetery Hill. This trail has always given me trouble mainly because of several steep climbs at various points on the trail. The first ride out on the sink line, I immediately beat my previous best by a lot. And all of that was made up on the climbs. Now some of that could be my improved fitness, but those climb sections were a lot more comfortable on this bike. But I don't ride this trail as often. This segment, however, Maple Lake East, is one I do frequently and I try for PRs. So there's a lot of data to compare. On the shakedown ride, without even trying, I beat my best time by one second. That was previously held by my custom Marin San Quentin, which weighs about the same. I'm far from being the best rider out there, but I am noticing big improvements in my speed through these trails. I haven't even switched to clipless pedals yet either. And we haven't scratched the surface of what this bike can do. There are so many places where I can shave weight off this bike. Out of the box, the size medium 29er sink line came in at a respectable 28 pounds without pedals. After switching to lighter weight tubeless tires, it's down to 26 pounds. A lightweight bike will always be faster and overall less fatiguing over time. And I think I could get this bike down to 23 pounds, maybe even less. In the coming weeks, I'll be doing some upgrades to the bike to make it faster. I've already completed one race, but we'll uh, talk about that one in a later video. In the meantime, I'm still training as best as I can. And I hope to get better with each race. Oh, yeah. And I need to teach myself to ride the devil's pedals. Subscribe if you want to see how all this turns out, because I may have bitten off more than I could chew. I hope you enjoyed this leg of my journey. Thanks for watching.